Hey everyone, Doc T here. Uh, thanks for joining me for this, uh, basically a walkthrough of what we've got here going at the Horses Advocate to help horses thrive in a human world, which is just an amazing concept. Uh, and I, I'll give you a little bit of background. First of all, in the past 30 days, I've attended uh, lectures around the world, thanks to these Zoom meetings. I've attended lectures on forage, on equine metabolic syndrome, equine asthma, the care of older horses' teeth. And it's just fascinating because um, there is so much information being bombarded upon us as horse owners. And in the last seven days, and this is no joke, I mean, I swear this actually happened the past seven days. Um, I was asked by three separate people the same question at three different farms. And I've been all over this country in the past 30 days, just visiting horse farms all over, you know, probably hundred different horse farms. And these three people asked this one question, where can I go to get good information? How can I trust the information that I'm getting to care for my horse? And while this is a little bit of a paraphrase, it's basically their questions in a nutshell. And I've been asking myself the same question for probably a decade at least, digging down deep, trying to find answers. You know, I was trained as a veterinarian at Cornell University in 1984, I graduated. But I started with horses professionally in 1973. And I was just adamant about trying to do the right thing for the horse. But I had some mentors. I was lucky I had mentors. Um, mentors are somebody who helps guide you like Sherpas when you climb the mountain. Uh, you need guides who know the terrain, who can help you through uh, using the most efficient passage. And I wanna be that Sherpa. I wanna be that mentor for you because I'm finding that the whole realm of horse care from barn building to feeding to medicine is layered upon layers in complexity. And I coined a word called complexicate. And I had to make a new word that's not there because it basically defines making things more complicated than they need to be um, to make usually somebody's point heard above the noise. And everybody's been complexicating with one thing behind that, and that is an agenda. And that agenda is usually trying to sell you something or to make you believe that what they are saying is more important than anybody else. And before you start accusing me of complexicating this, um, I want you to understand that the, the, the whole point of the horse advocate, as it says behind me now, is to help a horse thrive in a human world. I think you can see that now. To help horses thrive in a human world. And in the past 4,000 years, horses have come from being uh, wild animals to domesticated animals. And we're trying to help them. And in the past 40, 50 years, maybe, we have really concentrated the, the power of marketing behind that. And there's no marketing here. This is a this is an attempt to strip away bias and to bring forward uh, evidence that I call anecdotal. And really, there's nothing wrong with anecdotal medicine. Anecdotal medicine just means that these are observations that have been created over time. And in a world where everybody wants evidence-based medicine, we have to understand that that concept is new. Evidence-based medicine is um, taking evidence. Hold on, my, my blind old dog is banging at the door and wants to leave. So I just reached over and opened it. You know, we all have these dogs in our lives that at some point get older and get a little confused and lost. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm a veterinarian. What do you want? I've got dogs. I've got cat uh, horses. Um, that's just life. So hopefully you'll understand that and forgive that little interruption. But uh, the whole point of the horse's advocate is to bring you some unbiased uh, or, ev or experience over almost 50 years working with horses. 
and compare that to what is being said now and give you an alternative. Because in the past four or five years, I've been asking myself, well, how's what you're doing working for you? How is your feeding program working for you? How's your dentistry program working for you? How is the, the barn building that you did? I'll never forget this one guy said, um, I want to build, I, I built a barn, I built my dream barn, but nobody ever told me not to build it at the bottom of a hill because this horse, this barn is constantly flooded. And I want to help avoid some of these mistakes. So I'm going to go down here to this little share screen button. And I'm going to get you over to sharing this screen. This is the horse's advocate. Let me bring it over. Oh, gosh. Anyway, my head's going to be turned sideways because I've got over here another monitor. So bear with me. The Horses Advocate uh, homepage is being your horse's advocate won't change the world, but it will change your horse's world. And that's the most important thing I want you to understand. We're not trying to change you. We're trying to change how we interact with our horses so the horses can live a more comfortable and healthy life. And that's what the Horses Advocate is all about. And to do that, I've created uh, topics and the topics are right here up at the top of the page. And when you click on topics, you're going to see that there's three basic sections, horse care, farms and barns, and systems and diseases. And I got to tell you, there's about 700 topics in here. Not all of them have a lot of things written about them. Some of them have a lot of things written about them. Some of them have videos and almost all of them have images, photos that I've taken over the past decade of things that I think are important for you to know. And it can be a little bit overwhelming, but once you understand there's a structure here and a, a way to get through it, it's gonna really help you. So we have the section of horse care, farms and barns, and then we have systems and diseases that take up two columns. So, in each section, we have what I call a chapter. So we have aging horses by their teeth. This is all alphabetical. So you can get down here to horsemanship or coat colors and patterns. And as you click on it, all the different topics are gonna to show up. And if you wanna know what the Dun and Gorilla gene are, you can just click on that and it's gonna take you to a page where it's set up basically in a four tab present presentation with a bunch of images below. So I'm gonna have a, a summary and the summary usually is a brief one or two paragraph introduction to what this is. And then an article where I can elaborate a little bit more on what in this case, the Dunn and Gorilla genes are. I don't have any videos, so it'll say there's no videos here. And if I have related material, I will have links here that you can go to. But in the meantime, we have pictures of what I'm trying to talk about in the topic. And under the pictures, I'm gonna have the different markings uh, and their relationship to what I'm trying to talk about, okay? So the images have a lot of the information. That's where you wanna go. And of course, you can always go back to back to all topics or you can just go up here and click on it or you can take your back browser. Now, what's really interesting in here is uh, we have the ability to see this on the phone as well. And most of us live on the phone. And I just wanna briefly go here to show you that you can go do the same thing. So for instance, here, coat colors and patterns, and then the uh, Dun and Gorilla Gene are right here. And then you can look and see all the images right there, all listed before you. So it doesn't matter which one you're in, uh, you'll be able to see this. So let me go back to the computer mode because that's the best way for you guys to see it. Um, so this is where most of us are gonna spend the time. We're gonna get in here and we're going to look at all these things. We have uh, blogs. I am a prolific writer, I've been writing for uh, decades. And in the blogs, I've divided into dentistry because that's what I do for a living. I um, float horses teeth. It's been my passion since 1983 when I was uh, taught how to float teeth. This is before the advent of power tools and, um, and, and uh, automatically sedating horses and stuff. So I use something called horsemanship skills. Uh, nutrition blogs, I'm very big on nutrition because 
nutrition is at the root of all uh, illnesses in horses. I'm a big fan of horsemanship and I, that's all I call it. I don't have a prefix to it, such as the word natural. I just talk about horsemanship. And then I have my ramblings, my little topics. So these are really interesting in the nutrition blogs, for instance, uh, there are a ton of nutrition blogs and they're all um, in order of when they were published. Uh, I did do a 12 part series here and you can follow this from part one to part 12 and understand exactly what nutrition should be for a horse. So that's a lot of interest and blogs you can spend a lot of time. Then I have another thing called resources. And under resources, we have the no grain challenge. And I'm becoming quote unquote famous, <laughs> famous about uh, my no grain challenge because I want you to understand uh, what the effects of having a constant sugar load are on a horse. So the no grain challenge is a place that you really want to visit. And we're um, going to have a phenomenal page there with testimonials pretty soon. Uh, the podcasts are free. Uh, there, uh, so far I have four podcasts. I've got a couple more ready to go. And as they go in, you can go to the Apple podcast or Amazon audible or Google podcast. I'll just click on Apple podcast for a second. It'll open up and there it is. Apple has it and you can subscribe to it. I've already subscribed to it because I want to follow it there. Um, but you can uh, follow it on Google podcasts or any other place that you want to go to. Okay. Um, then um, newsletter. The newsletter is really good. The newsletter is, uh, we've had three issues put out now. This one is on cheerleading and coaching, which is just a phenomenal uh, opportunity to understand how you can communicate better with your horse. Uh, Decomplexicating horsemanship. Um, and then clicking on these things, you can actually see uh, this issue is on um, uh, feeding horses in in, in the underlying principles. Um, and this, uh, our first issue was talking about supplements and uh, additives that we add to our horse's food. Anyway, all you have to do is look at these things and you just click this view button and it opens up another tab in a beautifully dis displayed format. And if you wanna download it from there, you can download it and just read through these things. But I've got a lot of information here because I want you to understand that there are alternatives to what you've been told through the media on how to take care of things. We also have swag because if you actually believe in the horse's advocate and our mission to help horses thrive in a human world, you can get t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee cups, hats, uh, et cetera. Um, I, I'm drinking out of, I know you can't see this, but uh, it, it because it's green, it, it does the bears. But this is my horse's advocate coffee mug that I drink out of every morning because uh, I certainly believe in my, um, my uh, mission. And of course, we have the site tour. And the site tour is basically helps you through to understand what's going on. Okay, so that's the purpose of the horse's advocate. Now you know who I am. I'm a veterinarian since 1984 from Cornell. And I've been with horses working with them full time since 1973, which if you're good with math means that I'm just coming up on my 50th year with working with horses. And I have so much information that I want to get out there. And I decided I would put it on the horse's advocate as a website. Um, there's another opportunity for you to, to get a better look at these topics, to get a better understanding. And what I want to show you is in the membership site, um, I'm going to be able to bring to you a little bit closer connection with me as a mentor for you. So let me just take a moment to sign in here. Um, it's pretty simple sign up page. You're going to see it opens up into a Facebook like activity uh, feed and the activity feed is so cool because here's where we can all just say, hey, what's going on here? What's, what are we doing? Uh, I've got a new podcast out. I'm having a webinar uh, put up um, and people can have all sorts of discussions on our forums and it all shows up here. 
this is just such an exciting place to be. And I check in on here multiple times in a day. And you can see up here, I've got one message and I've got one notification to tell me that people have reached out to me and asked me questions. And honestly, this is where I spend all of my time. This is the best part of being a member is connecting not just with me, but with all the other members that are in here. And we have a bunch. We have them from Italy, from Australia, from Germany, from the United Kingdom, as well as America. And they're all coming here to learn a little bit more about horses. So that's kind of fun. Uh, the other thing is in the resources. Um, oh, over here, we have courses. And as part of a membership, we have two courses, one's on dentistry, which is, is, the, is the basics. It doesn't teach you how to become an equine dentist, but it gives you all the things you need to know about uh, your, the care of your horse's teeth and why it's so important. So that's really good. I have um, uh, all these units in here, 11 units, and you have to take each unit one at a time and pass a short quiz at the end so we fully understand it before you can go on and move to the next thing. We also did the same thing for nutrition. Over here in the nutrition course, you can see all these different uh, uh, topics that you cover and you have to uh, understand them and you have to uh, make sure that you take the quiz at the end because the quiz is everything. I'm so mean. <laughs> It's not true. It just is to confirm that you understand what's going on. And these courses are split up, in this case, uh, a video presentation of what, what a, that whole thing is about here. We're just talking about the introduction. Um, I have discussion points that actually follow the video. I have the original post that you're more than welcome to read over here, nutrition blogs. Uh, but the key points are right here as well. Uh, and then I have a summary, and this is what I do for each unit in the nutrition course. So you can go through there and understand it. Uh, also, as a member, I have something called the e-library, and I've written three books, The Ten Irrefutable Laws of Horsemanship. If you're a client of mine, and I've gone to your farm and actually floated your horse's teeth, I've sent this to you. This is, in a nutshell, everything you need to know about horsemanship. Uh, it fits in your back pocket. It's the essence uh, and if you can understand these, uh, then you can understand how to connect with a horse within 30 seconds, not 30 minutes and not 30 days. And almost 99.9% .9 of the horses I come up to, I connect with this way. I'm going to be putting together a course that's going to go in this in depth and detail to help people through it as a guide. Uh, I've also been a vet since 1984 and I have some true and incredible stories of a horse vet, which is very entertaining. It makes a great Christmas gift to youngins who want to uh, have some good stories. Um, but it is um, real, just like watching James Harriet, if you've ever watched that program or, or any other vet program, you know that there's some death involved and I approach it uh, in this book as well. So, uh, but I think it's a great book. Everybody loves it. And then since the days of the Romans, my journey of discovering a life with horses is actually my autobiography of why I decided not to go directly from high school into college and how I had to actually learn how to read correctly and take tests before I felt confident going back to Cornell and finishing my undergraduate degree there and moving on to vet school. So if you ever have any questions about what, where your path is going and why it seems to be blocked or how you can't find it. This book is all about me finding my path and my journey on horses. And I've always been a teacher. I've always loved teaching. And this is just the essence of it, the horse's advocate. So that pretty much covers uh, everything in the resources. And finally, the forums. This is the meat and potatoes, if you will. Whereas the activity page is the fun stuff where we can really stay busy and, and connect with each other. This is the meat potatoes where we've divided all the forums into basically a general uh, community barn where you just walk in through the door and there's everybody's hanging around and you pull up a chair or a bale of hay and you sit down and you ask questions. Um, I also have monthly rounds where um, rounds is a medical term where uh, a case is presented or several cases are presented usually on a theme. And we go over that and that's uh, every month I put it on in Zoom. 
Uh, I had the uh, March rounds on EOTRH, which is the disease of the front teeth of horses. Um, and then down here we have aerobic exercise and its role in insulin resistance. So they get into pretty good in-depth details. Um, we also have uh, horse care discussions, farms and barns discussions and systems and diseases. And if you recall back in the topics up here, that's what we had, the three sections. I'm also going to have, a, I also do have a special section on the no grain challenge because that is so fundamental and it deserves its own uh, forum for people to discuss what it is and throw up their testimonials, their journals that they've put up so they can all share with everybody else on their uh, journey of making a horse's um, gut health better. And then of course we have community feedback where you can tell me how, what a lousy job I'm doing or maybe how good I'm doing. And of course, member events and classified. So if you're doing that spring cleaning and you have some things that you wanna sell, you can uh, offer it to some of the other people here. But the forums uh, are really extraordinary. That and the activity feed, and it brings us together as a more closely knit group. And I think that's really important. So that's the horse's advocate in a nutshell. Um, I wanted to, to introduce you to it. It's live, it's on site, it's available, um, and it's actionable. You can go into any of these topics and you can hit the search button uh, right here and you can search for something like uh, colic, C-O-L-I-C, and hit enter. And it, it churns away because I have a lot of things here but there's 30 results, 28 of them are in blog posts and two are in the activity comments. Now you won't be able to come into the activity comments unless you're a member, but in the blog posts, there are 30 different things that we can talk about just on the word colic. So that's how incredibly powerful this uh, search engine is on this site. This isn't on some public site. This isn't gonna be a place where I'm gonna be shut down. This is my web server that I'm investing my money and with the help of my crew, which is my wife, Kathy, and my son, Matt, together, we three are bringing you this incredible opportunity to become more knowledgeable about your horse without trying to sell you something. And we're opening up this forum to people around the world. So you can say, huh, I've never heard of that, but I live in Australia, let's say. And this gives you an opportunity to see what's happening in Australia or in the Netherlands or in Thailand or any other place. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen right now. I'm gonna come back to you and look at you. There we are. <laughs> Technology is just amazing. Um, I would like to invite you to just enjoy the site, uh, work your way around it if you feel comfortable uh, and want to uh, connect more with some people, consider becoming a member. Uh, the membership page has the buttons that you click that takes you over to a place where you can um, uh, buy a subscription and become a, a member. That is an ongoing thing over the next, I don't know, lifetime. 10, 20, 30 years of this, uh, this is going to expand and expand and expand and become more in depth. Um, and uh, I'm just so grateful for all of you to come here and take a look at it and ask questions and make it something um, spectacular. That's my passion. That's the reason I get up in the morning. It's to have this webinar, this webinar, this website with webinars, with podcasts, to get all the information out there. So people have an alternative uh, point of view to understand that there are different ways of looking at things, that some of this evidence that we're collecting is in uh, analytical uh, data collections may not be actually accurate or pertinent for your horse, that there may be some other alternatives. And I'm just uh, being a voice for the horse. I'm being a horse's advocate. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not Doc T, I'm the advocate for horses uh, who happens to have the name Doc T. Um, and I chose that because um, people have trouble spelling the word Jeff because uh, it's spelled two different ways. Um, so I just went with Doc T. It's just a better way of doing things. Um, so please join us. And I thank you for your time watching this. Um, I'm not going to take any questions this time. Uh, 
because I think uh, it's pretty self-explanatory uh, on all the pages. Just go and visit thehorsesadvocate.com and take a look at um, frequently asked questions, uh, the membership site, and uh, let me know what you think. All right, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate everything here uh, that, that you guys do and um, take care. Bye.